Uh, great student section, again, inspired up to see them and see the confetti go up in the air. That was really cool. Uh, looking forward to the rest of Manhattan coming out to seeing us and having a, a packed arena. But uh, very proud of the guys. Uh, they really paid attention to the scouting report. Uh, we were very prepared. Coach Malagy did an unbelievable job with the scouting report. Coach Perry did a great job uh, calling the offense. So I was very, very pleased. Now that the first one's out of the way, what's kind of going through your mind about that experience? Well, it was, it was great to have my family here. And uh, the, the lady, Dr. Jennifer Cooper, who was the principal at Heritage Christian, uh, where, who first hired me, hired me, her and her husband, Royce Cooper, they came to my first game as a college coach, uh, head coach, and uh, so did uh, David Kelly, who was the pastor of the church. And so to have them here uh, to experience this with me was very special. Um, um, my mom and dad, they have had doctor's appointments coming up, so they couldn't make it here for the first game. So I uh, would have loved for them to be here, but they got to watch it uh, uh, via ESPN+. Plus. So um, it was just a terrific experience. How was it to kind of have your team celebrate you after the game? It was, you know, your first win, your first game. I think I saw the pictures. You got doused pretty good there. Yeah, I got doused pretty good. I, I kind of wasn't expecting it. I was just thinking about, okay, what are the three things I need to tell them so they can get out and go celebrate themselves, you know, and move on to the next thing. And then I saw bottles, and I was like, oh, man, here it comes. So, you know, enjoyed it with them. And then finally, just what's one positive and maybe one negative that instantly comes to your mind? Well, the positive is that we uh, shared the ball, uh, 25 assists, 30 made buckets, um, I think six guys in double figures maybe, uh, something like that. So, you know, that's a positive. The negative uh, is that the game is 40 minutes long, and I felt we only played about 17 minutes at the intensity level and the focus that we need to, um, you know, in order to, to win you know, Big 12 games, much less Big 12 road games. And so our goal now is to stretch that 17, you know, to 25, to 35, to, to get it there at some point in time. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to ask. How hard is it to teach a new team, I mean, that plays so well in the first half that, you know, you can't stop. I mean, you got to keep going through the finish line. Yeah, it's just uh, human nature, man. Uh, most people, uh, for every thousand guys who can handle, you know, adversity, there's only one who can handle success. and you know, teaching 18 to 22 year olds to not um, play the scoreboard and to not think about themselves when things are going well, but to keep, you know, doing all the little things. And so it, it's just a growth process. And, you know, we don't want to be like peaking today, right? So it's good to have things that we have to work on and growth that can take place. And you've got athletes, you've got scorers, you've got guys that can put the ball in. Is it more difficult to teach these guys, all new guys pulling, coming together Team defense, this is what you got to do together as a unit? Yeah, you know, chemistry is not just offensively, it's also defensively and communication and trusting that the person behind you that you can't see is going to be there for you and you do your job and, you know, those things. So that that's going to come along. And like I said, you know, I mean, the, the, this is a starting point and it's good to have things that we could continue to improve. If this is as good as we can be, we're in trouble. So it's good to have stuff to work on. Jerome, the three guys who sat out today, is the plan to redshirt them? Yes. Yeah, that's, the plan is to redshirt all three of them. They all three agreed uh, to do it. They all understand that this is going to help their career. And, uh, you know, we're going to be able to pour into them. And uh, I, I, was excited, I was excited about them making that decision. It was their choice. Okay, I gave them the option to and understand. Because good business is when both people win. And I didn't see how the win for them um, on a night in, night out basis if they chose to play, but I gave them the option to play or the option to red shirt and we laid out a plan for them and they chose the option to red shirt. And uh, you know, I, I'm excited. I think this moves our program ahead two years because uh, we're gonna have a great scout team. Every game, every practice is gonna be their game day and they're gonna get after it. And uh, it was something that was very successful for us uh, while I was at Baylor, and I'm very thankful to have the kind of young men who can see the big picture and are willing to buy into it. I also wanted to ask about specifically um, half-court offense. You guys obviously scored when you got out and ran, maybe stalled out a few times when you had to run run stuff. What can you do better in, in that phase of the game? I, I got to go watch film and see it. You know, um, you know, it's it's for me. It's always about pace. 
you know, what pace are we moving at offensively when we run our stuff. And so I got to go back and watch. But I thought for the most part, the package we decided we were going to run today, that we did a good job of running it uh, in the first half. And then in the second half, we just, you know, tried to get good ball movement and learn to play with each other a little better. I heard uh, King McClure really praise you on the Baylor broadcast earlier today. And then he also mentioned how weird it was for you to not be on that sideline. How different was it for you to know, you know, ha you have your own program now and uh, now you're running things? Uh, you know, um, watching Baylor play earlier today was a little different. And it was cool listening to King talk and then watching them do their thing. Uh, but. You know, I, I'm super excited about where I'm at right now, you know, and um, we, we have some really special young men. They they are the kind of guys that uh, you would enjoy having over your house and, you know, uh, just, just spending time with away from basketball. And they happen to be very talented basketball-wise, um, but we're probably more talented collectively than we are as individuals. And so I'm excited to see how we can make this thing grow and get to where it's capable of getting. And then Keontae mentioned that there was a lot of emotions after the game, not only you know for, for him coming back after two years of missing basketball, but also for your first game. Just take me through some of those emotions. I know you went through some of them, but talk about them some more. Well, I mean, for Keontae, right? Like I, I told the guys, nobody, regardless of whether you felt you played well or didn't play well, played a lot, didn't play, Nobody should be unhappy tonight, right? Because Keontae Johnson played a basketball game, a real game, right? NCAA basketball game for the first time in two years, you know? And, uh, you know, and a lot of the guys, are there, we have several guys on our team that had some tough roads to get here. And like, this is a second opportunity for them. So um, they, they just, we just have to be really excited about that. And I, I mean, I was, it's really cool for them to, to recognize that it was my first game here and the first win here and be want to celebrate it. That just shows the, the character of the guys and that they're willing to think about other people, not just themselves. Coach, I want to ask you about Bebe. Um, seems to be the first guy on the floor going after the loose balls and had some touch around the rim. Just what does he kind of bring to your team? You know, uh, Bebe, is probably the nicest human being I've ever been around. And and that's saying a lot because I was around Jonathan Chamochachua, who I thought was just incredible, right? And he's so kind, courteous, thoughtful. He's such a hard worker, so diligent, tries to do everything the right way. And so it's really cool to watch him have success and for him to show some things like, you know, I, I knew he could make a, you know, a mid-range shot. I knew he could short roll. Um, today he did it with confidence, you know, and, and that was cool to see. And his energy is contagious, right? And so when people see him do things, they want to do it too. And the fact that our team celebrates those things will have more guys wanting to do that. I'm curious about um, the dynamic when Desi and Marquise are both out on the court. When one of them's out there, they're, they're the lead point guard, it seems. When they're both out there, um, how does that kind of change the dynamic of the offense? Well, it just makes us harder to guard. You know, you have uh, multiple guys who can make plays uh, for themselves or for somebody else. And, and I, I hope we get to see more of that. I'd like to see, you know, the reason that uh, Dorian, we didn't feel we could redshirt Dorian, uh, which might have been the plan going in. First of all, Dorian improved a ton, right, where we felt he could help us win games. But now it gives us a chance to play three guards at times. And so it gives us a little different dynamic. Coach Tang, it seemed like your floor spacing was uh, not what you would normally see for an opening game. How would you feel about it? What do you mean by that? In a positive manner, it felt like yeah. the floor spacing was pretty good. For well, a, well, man, pretty long I'm just you, Rodney Perry does an unbelievable job teaching offense and spacing and, uh, you know, just reading, you know, and, and the guys did a good job of really buying into it today. And uh, the, the way they guarded certain things dictated that we give extra space in certain areas. And, and I was so proud of how the guys – um, bought into to doing and executing it. Can you can you go into those those texts in the in the second half and when and what went on there? We weren't able to kind of see. 
what, what, what those got all worked. I, I can't hear you. Can you say that again? Sorry, with the, those technicals in the second half, can you kind of go I into I think we got a there? flopping call on one. Um, and so and I know it's a point of emphasis this year. And for referees to advance, they'll get to the NCAA tournament. They have to call it. And so I understand why, why Amy called that. And then Quan's, uh, he was just, um, that, that's not a, the K-State character that, that we are going to have or represent out on the court. And um, he understands that. And um, we'll, 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 we'll take care of that. And then aside from that moment, how do you kind of evaluate what, what Naquan did? today on the court I, I thought he was all right I thought he was all right you know he, he can attack the rim he's super talented right and so um his ability to make plays one-on-one -on -one and because of his length and his ball skills he can get a shot off at any time and so th those things are real positives and there's some other things that we can get better at but tonight I thought he was pretty good you talked about Dorian uh, redshirting. In what ways did he really improve this offseason to, to not redshirt? Well, he came in at 177, I think, or 171, and I think he's 193 right now. Um, so, I mean, Phil, our strength coach, uh, just did an unbelievable job with all of our guys. And, um, I, I mean, our, our goal this summer was to get the Big 12 bodies, and I thought that we've developed some Big 12 bodies and then his confidence level. And just every day he didn't treat it like he was going to redshirt. He treated it like he was trying to play. And so we, we see the fruit of that. And then 41 bench points tonight. What does that say about the depth of your team? No, that's, that's great. I feel like, you know, some teams they sub and they, they don't get, they, they maybe stay the same or drop. And I feel like when we sub, we, we can get better. And so that, that's, you know, it'll allow us to have um, some runs in games that you get that kind of separation. It's hard for teams to, to catch back up. There was a 13 minute stretch there. Uh, Keontae had 11 points in those 13 minutes, as you know, three pointers and dunks and very active. What, what can be his potential here for people that may not have seen him during his time at Florida. What's his potential here at K-State? Well, I mean, uh, he was voted preseason SEC player of the year, you know, and so um, I, I don't, I don't want to put a, a ceiling on it. I don't even want to put a floor in it. I, I, he's a really good basketball player, and he's really talented. And uh, every moment that he gets to play, it's a special opportunity. And um, he's just one of those guys that can go get it. Like he can get hot and go get it. But I think we got a couple guys like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we got a chance to be pretty good. Thank you. you got the first one out of the way now. You get to go on the road uh, to Cal and just was wondering uh, your thoughts on, on your first road game and, and facing Cal. But I, I'm excited about it. I, we, we planned this. This is the one game that we scheduled. Everything else was scheduled for us. And I wanted to play a good team on the road because if you're going to have a chance to win this league, uh, if you're going to have a chance to go to the NCAA tournament, if you're going to be a – tough teams can win road games, right? That That's just the mark of a tough team. And, uh, you know, that's something we've talked about all summer long is what it takes to win road games. So I'm excited. Uh, to have a chance to go and see how much we've improved on somebody else's floor. Coach Fox does a great job, you know, out there. We, when he was at Georgia, we played him uh, at Baylor. And, I mean, they were always hard to prepare for and hard to guard. And, you know, they're going to defend you. And so uh, I, I'm excited to see how our guys respond to being in a different environment and knowing that this has been, been the focus. So we'll, we'll have a pretty good gauge of what we need to, to work on coming back. One more question about starting David. Was that because he worked harder in practice this week, or was that a matchup thing? Uh, yeah, he worked harder in practice this week. And I mean, no secret, our guys know. And uh, so we have a certain level of expectation. And guys, like I said, you know, not uh, we have to be consistent in what we do. We want to be every play, guys. 
you know, not, not just everyday guys, but every play guys. And we'll go back and evaluate and see how things were, and uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll move forward. But they're, they're always competing. This was your first opportunity to be a head coach in a game. What do you think you maybe learned from tonight's experience that you'll be able to build on going into the second game against Cal? Uh, I'm going to go watch the film and, and figure out what I could do a little bit differently. Um, my, my body language, you know, sometimes I, I, I want them to remain poised and sometimes I might show a little too much, you know, frustration. So I, I got to keep getting better at that. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great night.